in this video I will show you how you can curve the bottom of the fascia and provide you with a totally different look on a home. However, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at a more common roof overhang. And here we have a plumb cut where the fascia board is going to be vertically level instead of square coming off of the corner here. So keep in mind that you could always use a different angle here. It does not need to be like this. It can come back here a little bit. And this is what the bottom or underneath side would look like along with what it would look like if we removed the sheathing. And if we want to put some type of a curve at the bottom, we're going to need to increase the size of the fascia board. And you can use a variety of different sizes of fascia board to accomplish this. And in our example, we are going to increase the fascia board from five and a half inches to seven and a half inches to provide us with a two inch curve. And this curve can be calculated a variety of different ways. Now I am going to put a link here to a video that will help you figure out the curve here from any point that you are going to be using. For example, in this one here, we're coming from here to about the middle of the block. However, that could create a problem down here if we go to this point here. So we might want to go to the outside. And in some cases, we will need to go from the outside of the fascia board to the inside of the block and that would look something like this. So if you want the curve to be a little more shaped like a curve instead of coming to a point and then flattening out, then you might need to create a block like this. And I'm not about to suggest that you shape your block like this and leave a little teeny section here that could be a nightmare to cut, but you could always stop it right here create a template like this that's going to go all the way through and then for the rest of your blocks you can stop it right here to create a better curve and of course if you want a little stronger curve then you might need to cut into the roof rafter or truss and since we're dealing with the overhang I wouldn't suggest cutting too much into the truss because we're still going to be using it to support our overhang for example if we have composition shingles or a wood shake roof then we might be able to cut a little deeper into here but if we have a tile roof something with a lot of weight then we might choose not to cut into the roof rafter overhang however if you do then it can be done the same way and in this one here you can see where it's creating a little bit of a problem when we come from here to here because we're dipping into this area here so this might not be a good idea to do it this way. You might be better off if you draw your arc from the front of the block and the back of the fascia board. So another thing to keep in mind when you are designing something like this. Now let's go ahead and take a look at raising the fascia board to where it's just going to be below the bottom of the roof rafter. So I haven't changed the size of it. I have a two by six over here and a two by eight over here except it's sticking up a little bit further so that we can create a larger curve for our overhang. And again, another example of a stronger curve and a more shallow curve for your roof design. And keep in mind that something like this might require smaller boards. For example, we're going to be using one by fours. You might actually need to go to a one by two or something smaller to create the shaped curve. The next step, of course, would be to cut all of the blocks and put them in place. So here we have a nice curved transition. And let's not forget that we will be able to see all of this from the bottom unless we build a soffit. And after we have installed all of our boards, we will need to focus on shaping the fascia board here. And since we have raised the fascia board up and are using a larger piece of fascia board, for example, now we're using two by eight on the front and two by eight on the side, then we will need to shape this section and then flatten this one out here in order for it to look something like this. Now, this isn't going to be very difficult to do. 
and you might not need to install the fascia board to do it. You can do it on the ground by positioning the template in the same place that you would have to create your blocks so that everything lines up. And this actually looks neat. This is kind of a neat detail. And I rarely see it done. And I would imagine the reason you don't see it done is because it isn't going to be that easy to do. And even though I'm not providing you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this, you should get the general idea. However, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the video description comment area, and I will answer them as soon as possible. Now, you will be able to see something like this from the bottom. And if you didn't, then obviously you would need to shape the rafter tails in the same way that you're shaping the fascia board here to use solid pieces for the rafter tails. Next up, let's take a look at the 1x4 tongue and groove sheathing that we're going to be using. And most of the time they will allow you to run two of them and then you need to break them up. And some building authorities might want to see these breaks at every four feet. However, I have seen them at two feet before. Put our roof sheathing on, give you an idea of how it's going to transition from the overhang boards to the OSB. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the nailing. And here we have two nails. This is a one by four and you might be able to get away with just using one nail. One nail at this end, one nail at this end for one by four. However, I cannot provide you with that information. If you don't know, you don't want to check with anybody, use two nails. And then let's take a look at another problem you could run into. If you see here, there is a gap at the bottom and over here there is no gap. And that's because we trimmed some of this side on off so that we could create a tighter gap here and you might need to do that. You might need to actually just trim this section to create a tighter fit. And again, that's a detail you will need to figure out whether you want or not. And keep in mind that this gap will get wider as the curve gets larger or steeper. So don't just start nailing this stuff on here. Take a look at how it looks from the bottom before nailing the heck out of everything and then realizing you didn't want it to look that way from the bottom. And in my drawing, I went ahead and I left the tongue here to show you that you might need to shape the tongue also or the groove. You might need to cut out some of this to get the desired look that you want from the bottom. And hopefully most of this made sense. You're going to run your 1x4s up the side here so that everything from underneath looks the same. And then you'll simply repeat this detail on all four corners. 